New York and on the new Hot 97 app, Ebro in the Morning. On Hot 97. Yo, it's Ebro in the Morning. Laura Styles, Rosenberg, and the amazing Georgia Smith. Yeah. Hello. Now, I was just beefing because I've never seen her with her hair out before. Well, you must not watch my Instagram stories. So. I don't. Well, then that's I why stopped following know. you on Instagram, to be honest with you. Why? Once the bikini photo came out and you started getting, I was like, yeah, I'm out. I'm cool. done. I'm cool. But it, I'm older now, right? Yeah. So there's a lot of, you know, even Jesse Reyes, right? Another young artist I like. She started getting, I've known her for a while. She started mm-hmm. getting sexy on the gram. Y'all too young, B. Okay. I'm out of here, son. Sorry. I, well, I'm not going away anymore, so there won't be any more bikini pictures, so you can follow me back. Well, the bikini picture was a great setup for the single with Burner Boy, right? And the video. That was, yeah, that was the vibe. I mean, yes. True to the, the video looked hot. Thank you. The video, no, no, well, I, I felt it was sexy also, mm-hmm. but it, I mean, it also looked physically hot. <laughs> yeah. That no. was sort of the vibe. Like the apartment's like a hot, sweaty apartment. Do you know what? It wasn't that hot. It was made to look hot with like this fog and yes, yeah. It worked. Mm. Um, how, how, uh, well, first of all, I, I, I noticed something interesting about you, which is that I saw you did an interview the other day with my friend Bacon Barrett, KYS in DC. Mm-hmm. And what, what, what I was taken aback by, I was like, oh, yo, you're a, you're an international superstar, but you're just now doing the American regular radio rigmarole of like local radio. Like you were doing a little, it looked like a little conference room interview with like, so is it weird, honestly, being such a big star where you're from and getting all these accolades, but to the kind of like new in America, new American urban audience, you're like a brand new artist? No, I don't find it weird. I think that's the whole point of. Well, I mean, I'm I'm here to be discovered. Like people are going to discover me, so I'm, I'm going to be new to loads of people. So yeah, but yeah, I know it's taken me a while to come to America to talk to you guys. Sorry. Why? Why has it taken you so long? I don't, I don't like interviews. <laughs> really? Don't. Yeah, Why? I don't like talking. I mean, it's not I don't like talking. I like singing. I don't like explaining things. So I'm just, yeah. So you like your lyrics and songs speak for themselves and not do interviews? Yeah. And I, well, yeah. why don't you not do interviews? No, because like. Just with because me. Not- I mean, you can do interview. We've interviewed now at least two times, three times, FaceTime. But it was FaceTime. Uh-huh. It was chill. Uh-huh. So just only interview with me and my friends and fuck everybody <laughs> else. We could, it, you know, it'd be like uh, so Howard were- Cosell and Muhammad Ali. There's another. There's some other conglomerates in media that if she did that, fuck them. I hear you. I'm with you. I agree with you. But I think it'd be challenging. Too. <laughs> you know what I mean? Fuck those guys. Yeah. No, I agree. I mean, Fuck these guys. The label guy. But is it is it just like... Um, <laughs> I cannot. I, what's the feeling like when you're going to do interviews for the first time in, in, in this kind of circuit? Is it uncomfortable? Like you are you don't want to get overly personal or do you just feel like you're on display and kind of have to put on a show? Yeah, sometimes. I think last year I didn't really... Last year was the first... Like, okay, if we're talking about last year, how about last year? I feel like I put on a show loads of times because I had to be like... Mm-hmm. All the time when I was actually really tired and I didn't want to talk about how I wrote Blue Lights, how I did this all the time. But then I know that I have to because people want to find out. Right. So I get it. Well, I think it's um, one thing I want to say for the audience tuned in right now. Maybe you've seen Georgia Smith. She has uh, uh, some amazing music out there. But I also think it's important for the American audience to know that one of your first big tunes in the UK, the Blue Lights record, mm-hmm. Which I oh it's three years ago now two years yeah wait let me just take it back like I, I don't I do like talking about it still I didn't mean like oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah sorry of course but you were talking about uh, what kids are going through black kids specifically in the UK dealing with police brutality mm-hmm. and dealing with things in the streets which I you know obviously here in the United States we never hold our tongues when it comes to talk about politics and police brutality and abuse of power. Um, you know, because I think a lot of people are going to meet you now, and you're this beautiful woman. You have these, you know, Be Honest is a sexy tune with Burner Boy, and it's going up the charts, and they may think that's all you're about, and I kind of want to make sure they know you're about more than that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm about more than that, to be honest. I what? thought it was really dope, because talking about being mm-hmm. more than that, um, I saw that you were performing, and you were super excited for a Shelter Music gig. Yeah. And so, shout, yeah. so can you talk to us why it's important to you Sorry, I thought you were going to finish. Is this, why is this gig so important to you? <laughs> well, um, do you know what? This is the first charity gig I've done. I haven't done a charity show yet. And it is so cold. Like, it's going to be like, there's so many people that are homeless all over the UK that just have nowhere 
to stay, especially at Christmas. I know it shouldn't be especially at Christmas. It should be especially all the time. Right, right, right. So yeah, this I think this would be a really nice thing to end the year with. Yeah, and it's I haven't performed my band for ages as well, so it's going to be a good get together. And I hope it does actually do it does do some good. Like I can see what happens with the money that we raise and think stuff. Yeah. Um, what part of England are you from? So I'm from um, Warsaw, which is in the West Midlands near Birmingham. Right. Not from London. Yeah. Does that mean anything to anyone in this nah. room? West Not Midlands. from London. West Midlands, mm -hmm. near Birmingham. Yeah, well, these are all things. So is that north of London? Yeah, I'm like I'm not a northerner, but I'm from I'm closer to like Manchester than I am. Got it. London. Yeah, so I moved to London when I was 18. My accent's slightly different, but you won't you won't get it to be honest. So yeah, no point and, even and, saying and that. And a lot of people may or may not um, understand the level of Caribbean influence and you know soul and R and B black music influence in the UK, but black music and R and B is and reggae music huge. Mm -hmm. Is that what also influenced your music? Yeah, I mean I've been influenced by loads of things from growing up, like. That even subconsciously, like my my there'd always be music in my house. So I'd come back from school, my mom's always playing something. Like my my parents would listen to stuff from like reggae, we got funk. My mom loves the slits and Black Sabbath, and then my dad would be playing just like um, D'Angelo, Damon Marley, all sorts. And then I sang. Um, I'm classically trained, so from 11 to 18, I did sang classical music. So I'd sing in like French and German and Latin. I wouldn't know what I'm actually Like saying. opera or something? Yeah, 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 basically. Oh, so, so I dope. did that. So I feel like I've been influenced by loads of things. Yeah. What's your favorite style of music to make? What I make. I don't, yeah, whatever I start singing, whatever Just comes whatever out of my mouth. Yeah, it could be basically. anything. Yeah. Vibe-wise. Uh -huh. Wait, were your parents musicians at all? So my dad was in a band before I was born. It was like a neo-soul band. Okay. And it's, it's fun because um, some of my friends who I grew up with, <laughs> some of their parents were also in a, the band with him too. Oh, oh really? Yeah. You know it's crazy? Sh I'm so old or she's so young that her dad was in a neo soul band, which was a 90s thing. Term. Late 90s. <laughs> uh, they want to be fair. Late 90s. Late 90s. Get later. But yeah. just, just to put it in context. Yeah. Because you I know, know hearing that someone's parents were neo soul went to you, went to us neo souls like Jill Scott. And <laughs> right, we're like, right, wait, right, that's like 2000. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but that's, but how old are you? 20, I'm 22. 22. See? Makes sense. So oh, yeah. Pal. Just like that. So your dad was burning incense, you know, and. He wore a head wrap. Dad was head wrap. He didn't know. He didn't know that. Well, I had the know. He was rolling fontally. <laughs> nah, nah. It, your dad wore like the British Walker hat. He had like the little circle glasses. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> nah, he just had shaved head. I think maybe he would have worn a beanie hat, but nah. Beanie? No incense. He was making salads with croutons. Nah. Fresh people. bread and lettuce croutons. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what's your parents? Um, are you biracial? Mixed race, yeah. Your my mom, mom's white. Your mom's English. white, and I'm not judging simply because you said Black Sabbath that your mom was white. I knew that off the top. So his mom listened to Black by the Sabbath. Way, by the way, me like, too. I was like, oh yeah, I need to ask her what her parents' background is. <laughs> no, but my mom puts me on to more reggae than my dad, to be oh, honest. Oh, really? Yeah, so let's just, yeah. So she's just super diverse musically. Yeah, honestly, like, she's always sending me things to listen to on YouTube and just, yeah, new things. And, oh. Yeah. She, like, she bought Rihanna's album when it first came out. She was like, she's going to be huge. Oh, really? I remember, yeah, I remember, she put it in my room. I remember listening. How big to of a fan are you of Rihanna? I love Rihanna. I think she's a queen. You ever met her? Never. What? Never. She oh, did. She she was putting her makeup onto my song though. Oh, that's Instagram. a moment. Wait, and y'all still haven't met? No. Did you put a comment? No, Riri, did you put a come comment on, man. Did you DM her? I DM'd her saying queen. <laughs> <laughs> Just that. Queen. Just that. Queen. <laughs> What else can I say? I mean, <laughs> what yeah. else should I say? I don't know. I, don't know. I wouldn't know. There, are, there are things, and I apologize for this. It makes me feel like such a, a barbaric ignoramus. But there are certain things that Brits can say, and to Americans, it will forever be amusing, and like a, in a lovable way. That when you just saying, "I DM to Queen," it sounded <laughs> to us, it like it. I can't. I mean, it's That's like funny. it's amazing. But hold on. So when you when you DM to nothing back? No. So I got Ed. I people love, like airing me, man. I hate getting fucking air. I love hearing when, like, amazing, successful people deal with the regular of, like, sending someone a DM and just looking for that scene and reply. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Didn't even open it. <laughs> but that's Rihanna. She's now, exactly. who she You know what will break the internet? Because your, your, your uh, swimsuit uh, Be Honest video, crazy. You and some Savage Fenty. Crazy, yeah. Crazy. Mm. Rihanna, uh. cut the check, fam. Stop playing around. Have, Let's get this they, moving. They sent me Savage Fenty. But you didn't it's share good. it with the rest of the world. Nah, it's too much, man. That's a lot. It's a lot. 
Right. So wait, did you really say you unfollowed her for a swimsuit picture, mm-hmm. but and now then, you're encouraging sorry, her to post laundry? Yeah, confused. but that's what she's supposed to be doing. I'm no, I'm not supposed to be. Who said I'm supposed to be doing that? Yeah, why is she supposed to be doing that? Well, because you How already was you. in your drawers in the bill. Well, it was a swimsuit. It was a swimsuit. swimsuit. And shorts. Different. It was like regular. Oh, it was shorts? I didn't see the I whole thing. I, I thought you were wearing shorts in that video. It was a regular. I'm subscribed to tell you. I'm sorry. I was like, I... Okay. Ebro, Ebro's reason for unsubscribing is because he's like appropriate and older and a dad. Nah, I wouldn't know. I just want to make sure I stay focused. Stay focused. For me, I actually have had a conversation with a friend today that I was like, sometimes women post things and men, no matter how far along we are and like developed as human beings, literally your gut reaction is like, I'm going to just type something crazy in the comments. <laughs> and then you're like, you know what? Let me not Let me do walk, this. Put the phone down, walk away. Yeah, and I see other women that I know commenting and they're putting up like peach emojis. Uh, and like, ass. Ass. how yeah, sexy, yeah. look at that ass. And I'm like, facts. And I'm ready to like, you know what? I can't, I forgot that looks. I wish more people thought like that. What to not do it. <laughs> yeah, people say some mad stuff about me. In you, comments. Have you, like, if, I, if, you're t- if you type my name on Twitter, like, oh, well, it's let's do actually it. disgusting. I got it. Wait, Come on. Oh, disgusting. Not even yo, funny. Yo, no, oh. it's not even funny. Like, the pe- there's, there's some, like, crude stuff. Oh, that's and I just cool. think. Well, don't but I don't do think that. they think you're going to see it. Yeah, they're doing I, it for their friends. They're I've not really doing it. <laughs> I've seen it. <laughs> so oh, you go and just disgusting. Just randomly nah, Google like, your people name? tell me. Like, my friends will be like, look at this. I don't type my name in. I ain't type my name in Twitter for like eight like years. It's just not. I don't like Twitter. It's I don't not use Twitter. It's not. I don't think. I don't like it. It's a weird place. You, Very. you're more comfortable with Instagram? Yeah, I just post pics of me on my story. And that's that. <laughs> I close right. the app. Right. Whereas the back and forth of like, let me just get unsolicited comments from strangers and yeah, what they think th- about me. Yeah, I think. Like, so Rihanna left you on red. I mean, or she didn't even respond. She but I'm sure your it. DMs are crazy. Yeah. Um, and you leave a lot of people on red. By I'm the sure. way, you I, I sent you a message before, unseen. Oh so. my god, you really? did. You're my Rihanna. So You did? What'd you say? I think it was like when you the just facts. Maybe Queen. No, no, no. It wasn't a comment to something she wore. It wasn't like a hey yo. It wasn't <laughs> that. It was it was something better than that. It was like new records hot. Okay. Or like you I'm know sorry. like uh, so you're no. fishing. I'm rubbish on my. Yeah, I was fishing. You was I was fishing. I was fishing. Line went out. Guess what? I got Rihanna. It happens. It happens. Ah, that's what I'm saying. That's why the story is so gratifying. Shoot your shot. Yeah. <laughs> but this is the point. We admire people, and you say mm-hmm. see them, but people are popping. Everything's relative. How many followers do you have on Instagram? Two point nine. So I go. George has two point nine million followers. How many you got? Thank- not enough for her to notice. Yeah, and, just, and then just Rihanna has like six. How many? A few hundred thousand. Oh, she's not responding. No. And then Rihanna's the next. You know. Besides, she looked at me. I try. You do your. Hey, I try. I, hey, don't feel bad. Do not feel Look bad. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, oh come, come on. on. We George just playing. It's okay. I'm playing too. Oh, okay. She, <laughs> she doesn't care. She doesn't actually care. She doesn't actually care. <laughs> um, you and Burner Boy together, big deal. And uh, you know, obviously Afro beat and you know music coming out of Africa is just having a great run, and the music's incredible. Um, we've talked about it before, but for the audience that doesn't know, how did you and Burner Boy leak up? So I I messaged him. I actually DM'd him. Mm. He responded. Yeah. What was that like? Sick. I was like, oh, I'm going to have a... Re- Sorry, don't laugh at the okay. language I use. No, not sick. Means good. I'm laughing that you got to have the reaction okay. of what it's like when someone replies to you. Because I don't, I don't know what that feeling is like. Don't worry about your language in America. Yeah, yeah, talk- we love your language. By the way, keep Americans going. talk shit. Fuck them. Just keep going. Okay, so keep going. So, yeah. First off, when we wrote the song, when we did the song, everyone in the studio were like, oh, Bernie Boy sounds sick on this. And I was like, yeah, okay. So I hit him up and I was like, I have this song I'd love to send you. And he was like, yeah, I think you're dope, sick. Send me the song. I sent it him. And then I got in the studio with him and he recorded um, the verse, to be honest, and then played me Gumbody as well. Which and is then, on his album. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then so when I was in Madrid, I recorded that for Gumbody for his album. And then that's how I think up. Boom, boom. Wow. Yeah. So Easy I'll- breezy. Um... Musically, influence-wise, for you coming up, we know you like love Rihanna and she's a queen. But who else musically were you really into? Uh, I love Amy Winehouse, rest in peace. Mm-hmm. Nina Simone. I listen to like Damien Marley, Nas. Um, that album is so. Ebro loves that album. Ebro's a big champion one of, of the Damien Nas. One of those great albums. Uh, I remember I wrote up the lyrics to "Welcome to Jamrock." Like I, I, I wrote them out because I was like, I just wrote them out so I could read them. I, was, I don't know why I did that, but I did. And yeah, I mean, yeah. What else do I like listen to? Hip hop stuff too, or no? I love my staff. Yes, and very sorry, it's not my staff anymore. Yo, while you're here, you should go over to the Brooklyn no, Museum. I'm not here long enough. Oh, really... how, are you here today? Yeah, but I leave like 
Well, tell your label people, cancel your interviews. Like I said, we're the only ones that are going to do interviews from here on out. Cancel the rest of them and go to the Brooklyn Museum. You can hear the most deaf new album. Yeah. He's got an art installation at the Brooklyn Museum. That's the only way you that's can hear the album. That's the only way you can hear the album. Okay. You heard it? No. No. I haven't gone None of us have. That's really, that's... <laughs> yeah, you no. live here. I think it's right down there. <laughs> yeah. But no, you haven't made it yet. I haven't made it yet. But um, Yassine Bey, yes, he's amazing. Most. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Anyone else? I put him on the spot. So I, don't like interviews. I didn't ask you to Yo, drop one. See, Rosenberg, you yeah. want to Sorry. Yeah. That was such a tough, <laughs> really, tough question. What a tough probing question. <laughs> <laughs> what Georgia, what music do you like? I'm such an asshole. No, I'm joking. Um, yeah. And how long have you been at this, by the way? Like, uh, like aggressively pursuing music? Mm. When I was 18, that's when I moved to London. And I worked in Starbucks and I'd just be writing all the time. And yeah, from, from 18, yeah, so... Not that long. 18, no. That's but not how did long. it how did it work when you okay, so you moved to London, right? Mm -hmm. On your own mm -hmm. to pursue your music career. So before that, when I was sixteen, so I met my managers when I was fifteen. When I was sixteen, I'd be um I'd come up to London in the half the school holidays and work with uh, Maverick Sabre, who's an amazing Love artist. Maverick, man. Yeah, he's, he's like my big brother. Well, like, how did you connect with him? Because my manager is his friend. Oh, okay, so gotcha, gotcha. I would write with him and then I decided I didn't want to go to university, college, so I um, moved to London in my, with my auntie and uncle. Worked in Starbucks until Christmas 2015, then I left and put out blue lights, and then that. Here we, and then so here we your go. auntie and uncle were, a they knew that you were going to blow? No, no one. So they took a chance on you, and they just no. moved with you, or they? No, 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 no. I, they lived there. My oh, auntie okay, and uncle okay, live okay, in okay, London, okay, gotcha, and I gotcha. moved in with them in the room, and then I stayed there until I then moved out and got my own place. Yeah, that's what I did. This feels timing-wise pretty sweet, too, because it feels like, I mean, not, obviously London's had a thriving music scene forever, but from an international standpoint, it feels like things are pretty popping these days with British artists. Mm -hmm. Seems like it. At least in hip-hop, at least in our world. It's it's making it to our but world also more than this. They have some amazing, soulful singers yes. that really love R&B, love the songwriting, you know, not, you know, like really writing songs over there. Well, that's always been a thing, too. Like, in terms of songwriters and London, like, I'm reading uh, I'm reading Paul Simon's biography right now. And even in early on in his career, like 1966, it was him going to London for a year or two first and just doing small performances and being around other writers that, like, set off his entire well, career. Well, I think there's just a, you know, we talk, we talk about traveling a lot, right? When you go certain places, we rate places based on respect level, even here in America. Like, we talk shit about a lot of cities in America. And, you know, when you go to um, certain cities, there's, you know, like, you go to Japan, their respect of culture and their own culture and other people's cultures is just very, very high. When you go to London, right, while you know there's this, you know, there's an underbelly of bullshit there when it comes to live performing and different music cultures and et cetera, et cetera. There is a lot of interest in going to see. And particularly and, good, soulful yeah. sort of music, I feel like, has always had a place there. Um, it's been a great town for that. Like, I feel like even what you mentioned most, even artists like that going back to the 90s, they were always playing London and getting a certain level of love there. Didn't that they he lived there for a bit. Yeah, yeah, he was there for a long time. Mm -hmm. There's, that's a whole other story. Well, her name is Georgia Smith. It's a pleasure uh, to meet you on your first Thank you. trip to America. Thank you. It's not my first trip to America. Well, well your it's first your first trip here. Media run. Okay. There you sorry, go. Sorry, it's it's like Five Goes West. <laughs> you did. You toured America though, as and done shows here. A few times, yeah. Yeah, but you just times. didn't have time for us. No, it's not that I didn't have time. It's that I don't like interviews. Scare me. How do you feel about this one? Great. <laughs> are you li Are you lying? <laughs> no. Can you see? She loved it. Dude. She's so <laughs> she's into this. She's gonna post so many clips. Yo, man, man, she's an asshole for real. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> like you gotta really pay attention. No, I really appreciate it. The, the, it's, it's a sweet British asshole that's unique, and not everyone has it. <laughs> not everyone brings it out. <laughs> Georgia Smith. <laughs>